Hey everyone, this is the GVE A117 bag. So I recently made a review about the XS306 tank lock bag, the other big bag from GV's tank lock series. I returned the other bag, I didn't like it. Uh, you can see the other video on my uh, channel here. And this bag I'm gonna keep, although I think it has some design flaws as well and I would not recommend it per se to everyone. Uh, let's walk around the bag, uh, see what I mean. So it also has like this, um, Annoying dangling strap here in the front that I already tamed with cable straps and I'm looping it through another tie down uh, strap that I have permanently attached to my bike. But I would much have preferred like a solution like they made here with this bag, like, you know, some buckle or something where you could like come up with your own solution. But that strap here is annoying. The strap is so annoying that even in the official GV material, they cut it off, you know, see this guy is walking with that bag but they just photoshopped out the strap. The other thing that uh, is also like very substandard is that it does not have a USB port anywhere. You could park them here in the front and open them a little bit and loop the cable through, but that's not really ideal. So I wish they would have put something here. So what's great about this bag is the top window. So I put my phone in there, it's a Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus. It has like a diameter of 6.3 or 6.2 inches. And um, yeah, so it's not covered by anything, no nudge like with the EX306 bag. It's uh, easy to put in there. You can route your cables through this, same thing. Um, it might hang down a little bit here if your back isn't fully stuffed. So the whole back isn't really all that stiff. Let's take a look inside the bag. So it has a dual zipper here. Um, they're easy to grab. They, unlike the other bag, they gave you like these um, little straps on them. So they go all the way around, both of them. Seems to pre work pretty well. So I'm open it, gonna open it up with one zipper and ta-da, there's the bag. You probably can cut this uh, information off. Again, the top window doesn't have any extras or something, you just, put in your phone. And as with the other bag, uh, I would say for a bag that price range, I paid $130 on Amazon. There is no pouch or no net or nothing, no pen holder. So this could have been much better. But where it gets really bad is that this whole bag is more like a duffel bag, okay? So the EX XS306 is more like a piece of hard luggage, thick sidewalls and all that. And this here, is uh, I kind of have to take it out. Um, they ship you the bag pretty much deflated. So they, it, it's like this, you can crush it. It's, it's, not, it's not stiff. And they give you this, I don't wanna pull it all, all, the, all the way out guys. So it goes around all the way here. It goes into a pocket here on this side. And this is like some kind of plastic cardboard thing. Um, and they, they ship it to you rolled up next to the bag and you insert it like it's an Ikea package or something. And it, the bad thing about it is um, it's like this, it's the sidewalls. I mean, the sidewalls are not some soft material, but like this plastic board. So it just goes down in here in a pocket and loops or is held by this kind of loop here, which doesn't have any other features. There is nothing where you can like, bend it under or something. So it's just like, you know, it looks so cheap. Guys, why did Givi this did that? I mean, it's just sitting in here having like this hard rim. You could like put, put stuff in here or you shouldn't, but, and it's the only thing that makes this bag um, being a little bit stiff. Otherwise it would just flap around. And for me, I, I rode with this bike um, like on highway speeds no issues, but my bike has like full fairings. So the wind will like blow around the sides of the back. Maybe if, if you have like a bike, a naked bike uh, without fairings, um, I don't know if that might be an issue. This is more like the duffel bag of tank bags. Uh, on the other hand, it has some advantages. So you can definitely maximize the space. So it's not restricting you much because it is so soft. It has thin sidewalls. So not much space is eaten up by the sidewalls. And um, again, for me, it's great because I'm putting some bigger items in there and I like that. I like the fact that it's so spacious and voluminous, but other people might be turned off by how soft it is, you know? Okay, let's put something in here and let's expand the bag too. Here we go. No surprises there. And then you just, 
you just pull up the rim. So this is a HJC helmet, small size though, um, with a Bluetooth on the side. And I think I need both hands. So there's that. That's the um, helmet in size S. So a bigger helmet with like, I don't know, a GoPro mount or something. You probably could not fit in here. And I can, I am able to close that back. And again, for something like that, it helps that the back is overall very soft. It works. It's not great. You see the bulge here. This flap here is part of a pouch or a bag that um, is here in the front. So I think you're supposed to put the rain cover in there. So that works. But on the other hand, if you do that, the rain cover will be eating up space inside your main compartment. And if you're like using it like a shoulder bag, that, that pouch here might be uh, very good accessible on the other hand if the back is filled and like some clothes or some items are holding down this pouch here you might not be able to fill that uh, moving on to the side back so i criticized the xs306 for having very small side cases or side pockets sorry pockets and uh, this one here is pretty good my sunglass case fits easily in there so it's like i think 23 centimeters long by like eight centimeters high and you could probably put something in here that's like three or four centimeters wide in the center so no issues with that we have two of those guys here so i just put on the um, rain cover so i didn't tie it down so it's like this buckle here you can strap it tie it down I would say uh, you can slightly expand the back uh, with the rain cover, but not much. So this is the bottom of the back. Um, it's the GV tank lock uh, system. I You can move this. You can remove those four screws and then move it up to the front or to the back, uh, depending on your bike, where, where this is located. Um, yeah, so I, I moved it all the way back. The back, the good side is, or the good thing about this whole system is that this doesn't touch the tank at all. So no scratches. So it just clips in here. And for removal, you just pull this. It's a little bit um, cumbersome to do sometimes, but it works. I had no issues. And again, the important part here is why I'm using this and not a magnetic tank bag that none of this is touching the tank. But that will go for all of the GV tank lock series. And you will need this flange here. It's like a $20 or something. And it's a bike specific flange. For example, for this Suzuki, there's no flange. So I could never mount this back to the Suzuki, but for the Kawasaki, there is this flange and the nylon ring here. It will come with a bag. So yeah, overall, I'm happy with the back. Um, if you don't mind the softness of the whole thing and this being more like a duffel bag than a piece of luggage, then I would recommend that one because the window and because it will give you the most space, I think, in the GV tank lock system. So otherwise, keep in mind, if you don't have a bike with fairings that will like... Uh, detract or guide the wind around the back this might become a little bit annoying the softness of the back so uh, then in that case you might want to look into the other the xs series or the other they even have a harder luggage um, yeah again thanks for watching and safe riding out there